Hi, this is Christina Nicolai White, and this is an In the Mood to Scrap video from Two Peas in a Bucket. Today I'm going to show you how to create this layout. This is my mood board where I've collected all of my inspiration. I love this bright aqua blue sitting alongside the red, orange, yellow combination. I'm also really drawn to the bullseye with the arrows. I think that's going to help reinforce the message that I'm conveying in my layout. Before I started my layout, I did a quick sketch of what I wanted my layout to look like. I included my photo as well as the icons and my title, so I knew where everything was going to go. I've gathered everything together. I've got my photo that I printed and cropped and a tag because I thought I might hide my journaling. I've gathered these arrows that I have that are going to be on sale in our 2 P's digital section soon. These are a digital cut file. I've gathered some aqua colored papers. So most of these are scraps from my scrap bin, some of Amy Tangerine and some pebbles, um, as well as some basic gray. A couple of sheets of 8 by 11 craft card stock. This is an Amy Tangerine paper from Yes Please, and this is from Maggie Holmes from Crate Paper. Because I wanted to have several words in aqua, I grabbed a, quite a few letter stickers in that color from various manufacturers, as you can see here. I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna go with yet. I've also grabbed a variety of embellishments from Brad's and Wood Veneer, as well as enamel dots from My Mind's Eye. Some of my tools, a mechanical pencil, scissors, my favorite eraser, as well as this wonderful rub-on from the Amy Tangerine Yes Please collection. And last, I've grabbed some watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell, as well as some Mr. Hueys from Studio Calico in uh, pink and yellow, as well as some aqua blue colors. I've gone ahead and cut my Maggie Holmes cloud paper into the 8.5 by 11 size to be the left hand side of my layout. I'm just going to kind of lay things out really quickly um, to see how it will all look together according to the sketch that I made previously. I'm ready to start cutting my bullseye, so I've grabbed my Amy Tangerine paper. I'm going to use this washi tape as my guide for my center circle. Once I've decided which side of the paper I'm going to start on, I'm just going to trace around this washi tape to create the inner circle of my bullseye. I decide to go ahead and measure my biggest circle next, so I'm going to use the cereal bowl as my guide. I trace around it, and there I've got my big circle. I'm just going to lay it up against my layout here to see how it's going to look before I go ahead and cut it out. As I cut it out, I decide to use that line as the inside of my big ring. I'm ready to cut out this big ring first, and then go ahead and cut the other rings, measuring the space in between as I go down the line. I decided that wasn't big enough, so I went ahead and cut another ring out of the paper that I had remaining. Before I glue anything down, I want to test everything out with my arrows and see if I like how this is looking. I think I have the rings how I want them, so I'm just going to leave them for now. I'm going to play around with all the aqua paper that I gathered earlier to try and make the layers on this other side. I like the different levels of pattern and color underneath my photo here. I'm just going to ground it though with a darker blue to give it a little bit of weight underneath my photo. One last shuffle and moving around of everything before I adhere this. I'm not sure if I like this outer ring that much. I'm going to take it away, play with my arrow a little bit, see if I like it. I think I do want that outer ring. But with it so thick, it has so much weight to it. So I think I'm going to cut it in half and see if I like it better that way. And I do. I think I'm ready to adhere this down now. Let's just see how it looks with the arrows on the top. I'm going to cut the arrowheads that are going to run up the center of the page. So first what I've done is made a one inch strip and I'm going to make them into one inch squares. I'm then going to turn those sideways and cut them in half so that I have equal triangles that I can stack on top of one another. Once I have those cut, I'm ready to lay them out. I don't really want all of the wood grain to go the same way. I kind of want them to be mixed up a little bit. So I play around a little bit to get just the right combination and then I'm ready to adhere them. I put adhesive on the whole thing and stick it onto one side of my page first. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess off of my bullseye rings from, that I hadn't trimmed before. I'm pretty sure I want them where they are now. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. 
being careful to make sure I have them in the exact place that I cut them from before so that then I can line them up and match them on the other side. I've gone ahead and adhered down my photo and I'm now ready to adhere down all of my arrows. I decided against the one I had been previously playing with and had cut these three instead. I really like the way that they look. I'm going to adhere my letter stickers onto this white pencil so that I can be sure of their placement before I go ahead and adhere them to my layout. Once I'm sure of their color combination, I'm not quite sure of their location, which is why I put them on the pencil. This way I can move it around a little bit. I look back at my sketch to make sure and see where I had originally thought to put them, and I decide I'm going to put them off to the side, not on the bullseye. I'm ready to go ahead and start with the aqua blue letters. I'm pretty sure I want to do one of the main titles in these letters. I'm going to just keep playing around with all of these different letter stickers until I get just the right combination of colors and words. I'm going to carefully measure out the letter sticker to make sure that it is the right color as well as the right size. I want to make sure it carries the right weight because certain words in my title should be bigger versus smaller depending upon the weight of the word. As I go through this process of testing which letter sticker I want to use for which word, I will use a certain letter that I'm willing to waste, like a Q, as my test letter to see how that sticker is going to look on my layout. As I'm going through this process, I realize I'm not going to have enough letter stickers that are going to fit exactly in the way that I want them, in the color that I want them, so I'm going to go ahead and add one or two words in with my pencil, which I'll later go back and add with my pen. I'm also finding that I'm going to have to cut some of them down. I like this particular block letter sticker, but they're going to be a little fat and my word isn't going to fit all the way across, so I'm going to have to go back in and cut each of them down to make them fit in the space that I need them to. I love this look of a multi-word title like this that has multiple different letter stickers all in the same shade. I do this quite frequently on my layouts. Once I've got the title done, I'm ready to go ahead and start embellishing this layout. I'm going to use a whole bunch of wood veneer stars and asterisks and some different little brads. As I'm doing this though, I decide that this other side of the layout does not have enough color on it. So I've gone through and tested with my watercolor pencils some different ways in which to add color to each of the corners on this craft paper. I'm going to go ahead and gather my watercolor pencils and multiple shades of red, a peach and an orange and a yellow to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm going to go ahead and start with my darkest color, my darkest red along the outside edges. That's where I want my most concentration of that color. Then I'm going to go in with the other colors, the lighter pink, the orange and the yellow into the centers a little bit because that's where I want it to be a little bit lighter. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm actually doing this quite lightly and using the side, the broad side of my pencil in order to leave the color on my paper. If I pressed hard, it would make a dent and I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and bring my water over and get started. I'm going to go ahead and turn my paper. I like to make sure that I start at my lightest section with my water and work towards the dark section. I don't want to pull a lot of that dark red out into the center, so I want to make sure that I leave it on the edges and I don't start there and pull forward into the middle. So I'm going to start with my yellow and my oranges and work back towards that dark deep red. I just keep moving my brush and my water around a little bit to make sure I get just the right colors that I want. I've decided to go in and add a little bit more color to some of this in the center. So I'm going to go into the dry area and add a little bit more color. I'm just going to keep pushing it around with my brush a little bit and even my finger to make sure I have just the right colors blended the way I want to. I'm ready to go ahead and add the color to the bottom. I'm going to go a little bit more here, more heavy, um, quite a bit more color on the bottom than I did at the top. I want it to actually weigh a little bit more and have quite a bit more color so there will be a lot more different um, color combinations down here than I did at the top. I'm going to go ahead and add quite a bit more orange and yellow down here, and especially in the center. I know from experience from at the top that I didn't go far enough into the page, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right away from the very beginning. And then go back in with my brush and do all my blending. And as I did at the top, I'm going to make sure that I start at the center with my lightest colors and work my way out to the edge to my darker colors. As I'm doing this, I'm using just enough water to make sure that I can blend my colors together, but not so much that I'm saturating and soaking my paper. 
Now that I've got that done, just a little bit of tidying up, laying everything back out again, seeing how I like it. Decided to go ahead and reinforce some of those colors that I did on the outside edges with a little bit of Mr. Huey's Mist. I'm just going to use an Amy Tan technique and do a little bit of drops versus any kind of spraying. I don't have any droppers, so I'm just shaking it up and taking out my mister and shaking off the color off the end of the tube. In some cases I'm going to let it dry and in other cases I'm going to go back in with my paper towel and soak them up a little bit. Some of the spots I want to be a little bit bigger so I've added my water to my paintbrush and I just went through and added a little bit more water to make the um, circle get a little bit bigger, the drop. And then in some of them I wanted a little more color concentration so I go ahead and just add a little more color to it as well. I'm still not satisfied, so I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and just dip it right into the bottle of Mister and go ahead and just add a few spots myself with my paintbrush. Once I was all done with that, I went through and added a couple of spots on the right hand side in the different blue misters and then went ahead and embellished my layout with all of my wood veneers and my enamel dots. You can see my title here in all the different colors and the different brads and embellishments. And on this side I added wood veneers, enamel, as well as a little bit of a Amy Tan um, rub on at the bottom for a skyline to add a little bit of interest. And that's my layout. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.